in 43. <laughs> okay, we're gonna restart. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> my name is Brittany Hagen. I'm here in Elmer Eggleston's home on January 12, 2008. Where were you December 7, 1941? In high school. What were your feelings on when you heard Pearl Harbor been attacked? Well, I figured, well, we're in it. We're going to have to go after them. When did you join the Army? February 8, 1943. What did you join as, like, what for your plans? Did you plan on going straight over, or? No, I didn't plan anything. It was all planned for me. When we went in, they told us we were going to get 13 weeks basic ethics training. We were going right overseas. No passes, no furloughs, nothing. No visitors. Were you so I went to Fort McClellan, Alabama, and took my basic training. It was six weeks of basic infantry, and went to radio school, shipped right overseas, North Africa. Were you scared when you got on the ship because you didn't really know? I wasn't scared. I was too sick to be scared. <laughs> you were sick? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty sick, seasick. Uh, what major battles were you in? Well, from Sicily. We went to Sicily. I get joined the division, first first infantry division. Went went to Sicily. From Sicily, we went to England to get ready for D-Day, because we were going to be the assault assault division there, one of them. And we took quite a bit of training, you know, along the beaches and stuff. Then when they decided they were going into Normandy, they told us we were going to be one of the lead outfits on Omaha Beach. So, that was it. So you went to Omaha Beach? Yep. Can you tell us about what you did over there? Run like hell. <laughs> <laughs> when that door went down, we took off and got up just as fast as we could. Um. What was going through your head when you did when you were there? I was looking for a place to hide. Really? Yeah. You're kind of scared. Just a little. <laughs> a lot of noise. How? What were your feelings on the enemy back then? Well, had a job to do. Had to do it. Did you didn't agree with anything they were? Fighting for? Not all the time. <laughs> I used to get in a lot of trouble for speaking out. Really? Yeah. What like what did you Something say? Something I didn't like, I used to talk about it. You know. <laughs> what was the most amount of trouble you've gotten in for it? Oh geez, I can't remember. <laughs> Got a lot of KP. A lot of guard duty. Ah. Yeah. Um and I learned to keep quiet. Well, that was a good lesson. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you have? What medals did you get while you were over there? I'd have to read it off to you. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I got the Silver Star. You got the Silver Star for what? Gallantry in action, they said. Bronze Star with Oak Leaf Cluster. That's meritorious service. You know. I can you tell me, I don't know about the medals very much. Can you Purple Heart. Got Nick once. Huh. Mm. Uh, European African uh, ribbon with six battle stars. Bronze arrowhead for for uh, Spearhead in Normandy. Kind of read all that stuff off. I haven't been over it in a long time. I'm going to hold a list here someplace. <coughs> you don't tell me I can't find it. <laughs> I'll you find it. Hmm?
Or shut your camera off there, they burn it up. <laughs> well, come on here. There, there's mm -hmm. right there. And I'll read them off to you. Okay, that sounds good. It's been a couple of days, you know. <laughs> uh, European, African, Middle Eastern medal, six battle stars. Uh, the French oh, the Ardennes battle, Central Europe, Normandy, Northern France, Sicily, the Rhineland campaigns, that was the campaigns. Bronze Arrowhead, Arrowhead for Spearhead in Normandy, Victory Medal, Good Conduct Medal, don't laugh. <laughs> Army of Occupation Medal, New York State Conspicuous Service Cross, Veterans Foreign War, Foreign War Medal, Presidential Unit Citation, French Forager, two citations for Cassering Pass and D-Day in Normandy, the colors of the Croix de Guerre, and Belgian Forager, two citations, Battle of Mans, and the Battle of Eupen, that's in the, up in the Battle of Bulge. Uh, that's about it. Combat infantry badge. That's it. That's a lot of money. Enough. That's. <laughs> <laughs> you were in the Battle of the Bulge. Yeah, all the way through. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we fought in the Hurricane Forest and got the hell knocked out of us. But anyway. <laughs> Some of us survived, and I was sleeping next to this big old cow one night in the barn, a four-legged cow like this. He kind of come in, and he says, hey, Eggleston, where the hell are you? And I said, right over here. He says, ain't you afraid that cow will roll over on you? I said, I don't care, it's warm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway. He said, we'll pack everything up. He says, we're moving out. And I said, where are we going? To the rear? He says, I think so. So after we rode for about an hour, I said to the lieutenant, I says, I don't think we're going to the rear. He said, why not? And I says, see all those flashes up ahead of us? I says, well, that's shells going off or bombs or something. So anyway, we got down there about daylight. And they told us where we were, what was going on. The Germans had broken through and that we had to stop them. And, so he says, find a place to get some rest, he said, and I'll be back. He had to go back to the battalion to check, see what was going on. So I found a nice spot under the old shed that got wrecked. Of course, there's snow on the ground. So I got my blankets and got in there with this other guy, just getting ready to take a nap. And he just got to roll your stuff up. He says, we got to go. He says, K Company's coming through. He says, we got to join them going to move up, got to get this town, we had to take this town before the Germans got to it. So that was the start of it. So 38 days later we got relieved so we could go in and attack again to get move out of there. So they moved another outfit in to replace us and we had to attack. Did you lose any of your friends in that battle? Quite a few, yeah. It was cold, foxholes and weather like this. Snow two feet to three feet deep. What was your longest in a foxhole? About 38 days straight. Not in the hole all the time, I mean. But we lived in, that's what we, how we lived, I mean. That was, there was no buildings there, you know. Nothing to, no barns or anything like that. Were there any times that you were kind of second-guessed why you were there? On what? Is there any, like, time you second-guessed why you were there? No, I didn't second guess it. That was it. <laughs> there was no second guess. <laughs> you do with what you got. <laughs> Where were you when FDR died? Jeez, I can't remember that. All I remember is he passed away. Everybody felt bad. But... What were your feelings on that? Well, it's just too bad to lose a guy. He was a pretty good guy. What did you think about the atomic bomb? Beautiful. <laughs> I use it more often. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Never heard that one. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why should everybody get killed for those jerks over there? That's right. Blast them. After the smoke clears away, they know what they did wrong. <laughs> Where were you when the war ended? Czechoslovakia. What were you doing there? Well, that's where they told us we had to go. They, <laughs> they got us all together one night and said, well, the war is going to end on May, what was it, May 11th, something like that. But we're going to attack tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. we got to get to this checkpoint before the Russians get there. So I told my lieutenant, I said, hey, the hell with them, I ain't going. He says, you'll go. <laughs> <laughs> so we went. That's where we stopped right there. When did you go home? Well, that was 45. And I couldn't go home because the guys that were in the division were overseas longer than I was. And had more, they had more points because they were they were the first troops overseas in 1942. A lot of old guys left, you know. Mm -hmm. So they had to let them go home first, which is natural, you know. So I didn't get out till the May the war ended May 11th, I think, or something like that. And I didn't get out till I think it was September when they said. It was my turn to go. You were pretty happy to go home, weren't you? Oh, yeah. How hard was it to, like, not really talk to your family and friends when you were over there? Yeah. All you could do was write letters. You know, mm -hmm. I got a box full of them. My mother saved them all. Really? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> well, do you have any war stories or anything you'd like to share? War stories? Yeah. <laughs> Got a lot of them. <laughs> tell away. Shall I tell them about the toilet? I'd love to hear uh, that. <laughs> anyway, the lieutenant come up to my box hole one day. He says, come on, Eggleston. He said, we're going to go back, he says, and get some hot food and clean clothes. And I said, boy, that sounds good. So we got back here. The building that we were going to stay in had been hit. Command post was down cellar and down in the cellar, and we had to stay up above actually because there wasn't room for us down there. So got in bed, had my clothes on. Didn't we didn't go and take your clothes off at night, you know? Mm -hmm. So I got up in the morning. I had to go to the bathroom, so I put my helmet on. It was on the second floor, so I walked in the bathroom and geez, look at the toilet. And, pretty full. So I said to myself, geez, I don't know if I ought to flush it or just do what I got to do and then flush it. Said, well, I'll just sit down and do what I got to do. So I did. So there was a window like that next to me. And I was looking out the window, you know, and everything, and I finished. And I just figured, well, better flush it. So I reached around and back like that to flush the toilet. The whole room went up. Exploded. <laughs> Funny, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so they had a, what they did, they took the bottom board off the window and they packed the charge in there, the Germans did, mm -hmm. and they wired it up to the, somehow to the plunger on the toilet, the flusher, mm -hmm. and when I flushed it, it blew up. <laughs> oh my. So the, when I got out of bed that morning and I put, out of the, under my blankets, I put my helmet on. Why did I do that? I don't know. When I was inside the building. I don't know either, but I had two nice dents in it right there. <laughs> Slapped me up against the wall and I couldn't even, couldn't see for half an hour, 45 minutes. Blinded me, you know, with concussion. Everybody Jeez. come in, they were laughing at me and having a hell of a time. <laughs> I didn't think it was funny. <laughs> if I'd have stood up the way they figured somebody would come in and see the toilet like that, they'd stand up and flush it and it would have mm. got me right through the stomach and, you know, hips. You would have been dead. I would have been hurt bad. <laughs> oh boy. That's one of them. Any more? Yeah, oh, lots of them. <laughs> I can't tell you all of them. But anyway, another time we was getting dive bombed and 
and I was sitting on my helmet when the bomb, I heard him coming. So I got up and run and I kicked my helmet. Well, I chased my helmet, tried to get back because I figured maybe I could get under it or something, mm -hmm. you know. So when we, I went back to where I was, after everything cleared up, there was all these slits in the ground where the bomb had, the shrapnel from the bomb had, you know, had tore the mm -hmm. ground up. Had I, had I sat there or not chased my helmet, I would have got hit, but I didn't get hit. Well, that's good. <laughs> All this stuff happens, but you don't know why. Well, that's all the questions I have for you. Good. Do you have any war documents? Yeah. Do you want to see them? Yeah, I would. That's the division I was in, mm -hmm. Mars Sigma. That's our model. model. Nice. That's uh, the division with the regimental insignia, and there are some of the guys. Mm -hmm. Are you in there? No. I belong to that institution, society, or whatever you want to call it. Mm 